Good morning. Welcome to our titration curve video. Now in this video, I'll be telling you about titration curves, what they are, and if you are given a titration curve, how you can get to know what kind of titration curve it is. I think um, between 1978 and 2014, JAM only brought one question on titration curves, and that should be 1995 or so, question 22. We just checked question 22, 1995 titration curves. JAM brought that just once, like I said, over those years. Now, a titration curve, leave those four now, a titration curve can be like any of these two. In other words, there are some times you see it sloping upwards, and there are some other times you see it sloping downwards. Are they the same? Do they convey the same information? Well, before I proceed, I would like to tell you the meanings of these terms very briefly. Titrant T, titrand D, of course, the titrand is also called analyte. So what's a titrant and what's a titrand? You're used to titrations usually. Let's say you have um, a beaker, there's HCl in it. Then you have a conical flask with, um, let's say, sodium hydroxide. You put your indicator into the sodium hydroxide and then you start running HCl into it, right? And then again, you watch out for a color change in the sodium hydroxide. Now, that point where the color changes, or let's even begin from how you started, the substance you have in the burette, which may be the acid or the base. Yes, you heard me right. The acid or the base. Whatever you have in the burette that you are going to be running into another is called titrants. Then the substance you have in the conical flask into which you run the titrants is called titrand or analyte. So if I run sodium hydroxide into HCl, my sodium hydroxide will be called titrants and the HCl will be called titrand. But if I do the reverse, HCl into sodium hydroxide, HCl becomes the titrant, while sodium hydroxide becomes the analyte. Very good. Now, end point. We know that when we put indicator into, let's say, the sodium hydroxide, and we pour acid into it, the indicator changes color. That point where the indicator changes color is called end point so the end point of a titration is the point where the indicator color changes then the last one equivalence point that is the point where enough titrant has been added to completely neutralize all of the analytes that is when the analyte has become completely neutralized by the titrant, the very point where you have complete neutralization is called the equivalence point. And I tell you, depending on the kind of acid and base that you are using, the equivalence point pH, that is, let's say I'm carrying out a titration now and I have reached equivalent point, and I pick up the solution at equivalence point and measure its pH. Good. That equivalence point pH can be 7, less than 7, or greater than 7. We say when it is 7, we have a strong acid versus strong base reaction. Strong acid weak base reactions will give us equivalence point pH of less than 7. Then weak acid strong base titrations will give us equivalence point pH of greater than 7. Now, having mentioned these terms, having talked about their meanings and having related it to this, back to what I was saying before, that a titration curve may come downwards this way or go upwards that way. First, look at the labels for the titration curve. What do you see? On one axis, there's pH. On the other axis, there's what? Volume. The pH here is actually the pH of the analyte. pH of the analyte whose concentration is usually unknown. Usually, I said. And then, the volume here is usually the volume of the titrant. So, which means if I am adding ACL to sodium hydroxide, especially of unknown concentration, for the ACL, I'm interested in its volume. 
and for the sodium hydroxide i'm interested in its ph now sodium hydroxide is a base when i add acid to it what will happen to its ph its ph will be coming down from very alkaline remember the higher the value the more alkaline its ph will be coming down from more alkaline towards what acidic or at least towards neutral which is seven at 25 degrees celsius all right so looking at this curve where is the ph before we started adding titrans the ph is at 12 all right once you see a ph that is up there and as you are adding titrans the ph is coming down it tells you you started with a base and as you were adding acid the ph was coming down but when you see this kind of curve it tells you you started with an acid and as you were adding the titrans the ph was going up okay so that's the difference between these two in this case you start with an acid and you add base to it in that case you start with a base and you add acid to it but interestingly, even though most titrations that we are familiar with deal with adding acid to base, titration curves are commonly drawn as though we are adding base to acid. So you see them commonly drawn like that. So having used this two to lay the foundation, look at these four. You were asked, which of these is for a titration between a strong acid and a strong base, weak acid, weak base, and so on? this one is different from the others if you look at how steep it is this is not steep at all so once you see this kind of curve you know you are looking at the titration between a weak acid and a weak base all right that one is very unique but looking at the remaining three how do we know which is which there's one quick method you can use very quick method it's not 100 percent reliable but sometimes it works see what that is looking at this very curve the curve inside that graph now you see that it starts at a very low pH, very low pH suggests what? Strong acid. And then it ends where? At a very high pH. Very high pH suggests what? Strong base. So this is likely going to be for strong acid, strong base. What about this case? Very low pH, strong acid. But the other side, not very high, weak base. What about this case? Not very low, weak acid, then very high strong base all right that's one quick way of knowing those three but an alternative way you can differentiate the three is to look at this curve and then you see this line begins to slow and then suddenly becomes straight the point where that line becomes straight and then the straight line continues and ends somewhere let's say it ends here you see now straight line straight line huh so from here to there is a straight line once you get that straight line look for the midpoint of it and see where it leads you to on that axis you see that in this case it lands where on seven so we say that for the ph at equivalence point to the seven then we have what strong acid strong base if you do the same for this one you have this that's the straight point this is the midpoint of it where does it lead us below seven what about this this is a straight line now where's the midpoint somewhere here where does it lead us to above seven and so once you get the curve get the straight line get the midpoint trace it to the ph axis and use this to interpret your result all right so that's how to interpret or how to determine the type of titration that a particular curve represents i hope that was useful like I said, look at JAM of 1995, question 22, to appreciate what you have just learned. I'll see you in the next video.